Okay, this video is going to show you how to set up background music with Emulation Station. So whenever you're in that interface to select your games, you can get a selection of your own music to play in the background. And it could be a single track or multiple tracks that you set up. And it's all pretty straightforward to do. So this is the Emulation Station interface. And you should hear in a minute the music kick in. It's got a brief delay and then it should just start. There you go, that's just a random track that I've picked to give us as an example. But you can put, like I say, as many as you like on there. It's MP3 format. You just drop them into a directory just like you would with ROMs. And it's pretty quick to get up and running. So I'll give you a brief demo of how it works. And then I'll give you a bit of a guide at the back end. As always, it's much easier if you want to follow the instructions uh, to check out the wiki or forum post. And I'll make sure I link to those in the description. But this just sort of just be a general overview of how to go about it. But like I say, it's pretty easy to set up. It doesn't take very long at all. And it's a great addition to get a bit of uh, music uh, wherever you want to fire up RetroPie. Okay, so first thing is, as you can hear, it's running in the background. It's kicking in once Emulation Station has started. It doesn't do it before Emulation has started. And you can also set a, a brief delay. As I scroll about in the interface, it's just carrying on in the background there. It doesn't really care what actions I take in Emulation Station. It will just continue and loop if it's a single track or jump to the next track if you've got a few MP3s on there. Um, but obviously, if you are playing a game, you want it to stop. And that's also covered here. You can see how easy it is just to make sure that once you start a game, you don't hear the music. So if we pick one, uh, Mega Drive, I go in here and pick Streets of Rage. When I select this, you'll see as soon as the run command starts, the music has stopped. There you go. So as soon as that's there, it knows the game's starting, it pauses the music, and then I'm in the game. And the audio here would just be from the game. So if I just start that up. There you go. As you can hear, it's just uh, game audio and the background music isn't playing at all. But what it is going to do is monitoring uh, for when that um, for when well that run command menu when it uh, ends or when it runs again there you'll see that the music kicks back in from where it left off. So I'll quit this now. There, straight back in as soon as you're back in the emulation station interface um, until you select your next game. And that's about the the length of the functionality at the moment. It might be in the future that um, you'll see the music, the background music integrated a bit more closely with Emulation Station. Maybe there'll be a basic GUI to select the tracks or um, a bit more manipulation so you could go into a particular system and then the music change for that system. So there's a few options there. And I've noticed on the RetroPie forums a user, um, let me just double check, uh, a user called who was it? Synac, I think it was. Synac on the RetroPie forums. He wrote a, a mini guide about how to go about this in a pretty straightforward way. And it certainly works pretty smoothly and is straightforward to do. So I was in the process of just getting all his details up. And then the other day, another user um, wrote a guide, which was really useful. And I've based a lot of this video on the work of um, Synac and Maple Story, who put the little guide together. I'll link that in the description as well. But, um, it's just a few steps that you need to take that you'll see on the video in a minute and you'll be up and running. Okay, so next, next thing we'll do, I'll restart this and we'll drop straight into the command line interface and we'll make the changes. Okay, here we are in the command line and you can get here from Emulation Station by pressing F4 or you can SSH in with the tool like Putty. Um, do remember though, with the new versions of RetroPie, SSH is disabled, so you've got to enable it first in the Raspberry Config section. Just takes a second, turn it on, and then you can access it remotely. Um, or like I say, just drop out of Emulation Station, F4, get the keyboard in, and type these commands. So what we're going to do is install the MP3 player for RetroPie, so we can hear it in Emulation Station. And I'm going to paste in the command here, so we can see... Um, I'm running an install process for the program mpg123. So um, sudo app get install mpg123. I'll put a link to these instructions as well, but um, you can obviously copy what I'm doing here as well. So hit enter there, and you can see it's um, just downloading. So you do need to be connected to the internet to get this program. Make sure you've got your Cat5 cable or Wi Fi connected. Okay, it's just saying I'm not sure I want to add that in. Hit yes. It doesn't take very long at all.
But it didn't take very long last time I tried it. My Wi-Fi is a bit flaky, but I think it's finished downloading. It's just doing a few more bits. I'm running this on a Pi 3, but it should work fine on other versions as well. And what we'll do after this is edit the scripts that um, start up programs and just change the settings or add a couple of lines in there. That's all pretty straightforward as well. Okay, there we go, it's done, installed. You only have to do that once, and that's it. So the next thing we're gonna do is edit the script that starts processes when you start your Pi. So this is the command here, sudo, and so you're running it with sort of administration privilege, nano, the text editor, and the path is apt, retropy, configs, all, and script is autostart.sh. So this file exists at the minute. If I press enter, you can see the contents are basically saying run emulation station. But what we're going to do is say just before that to run or begin the mp3 player or the music player. So if I copy in these two lines here, and if you copy from another source, you can just get it into Nano by right mouse clicking and that pastes it in. So you can see um, here it's saying before it does anything, sleep for 10 seconds. So you can reduce or increase that depending on what suits you. And then it's just saying the MPEG program should start playing all, any and all, MP3s in this folder here, Home, Pi, BGM, um, which doesn't exist yet, but I'll show you how to create that. And then it'll look for any MP3 files in there, as long as it ends dot .mp3 like that. And that's what you need to do in that file. So if you hit Control X, it'll say, uh, do you want to save it? Say yes, and then press Enter. And that's that one done. And then next, what we're going to do is change the setting to make sure that the music stops when you start playing the game and starts again when you finish playing the game. So these files don't actually exist, so we're going to create them, but Nano would do that for us automatically. So we're going to, again, similar command and similar path, but at the end here it's called run command hyphen on start .sh. So run command will pay attention to the contents of this file when it begins. So if we edit that or create that, there's nothing in it because it doesn't exist yet. So we're just going to paste in a single line P kill, which I guess is process kill, you're telling um, it to stop the MPEG-3, MPEG-123 process. So when run command or your game starts, it will stop playing the music by stopping the process. So that's all you need in there. Control X, say yes and hit enter. That's that one done. And then the next one is to make sure it knows what to do when it finishes um, the game. So I'll paste that one in. Again, extremely similar, except instead of on start, we've got on end there, dot sh hit that and then we're going to tell it to continue playing the music so that command is pkill hyphen cint mpeg123 that's it control x hit yes and enter that's that one now we've just got to make sure that retropy can execute those scripts we've just created so this setting um, changes the um, the flags on the file i guess to allow it to be executable and we're just saying that's the file that we want to be executable. So press enter there, that's done. And then we're going to do the same for the other file that we just created. And that's done. And the last step is making sure that uh, the music doesn't play when you're in an interface like the command line. So if you maybe quit from Emulation Station, you want to make sure it stops playing the music. Um, so we edit this file called dot the dot is part of the file, but it indicates that it's hidden usually, so you wouldn't usually see this file. It's in homepy.bashrc, press enter. So the whole line is sudo nano forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash dot bashrc. And it's quite a long file, and you want to get to the end of it. And there probably is a jump to end, but I tend to page down, which is control and V. So if I do that to the end, there's the end of the file. And we're going to add the line just above retropy profile end. And that line is uh, bah, 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 bah. line is okay. Um, I missed that. Okay, I've got it now. And um, paste that in there. And this line is just saying to kill it when you're at a command line. I think that's what it's doing anyway. Basically, anything that looks like the command line interface out of Emulation Station, it stopped playing the music. That's what we need to do there. Uh, Control X that. Say yes. Press Enter. And that's pretty much it. We're just going to go back to the home directory. So cd space then a tilde sign. Um, 
just check where we are. There we go, home pie. And we're going to create the directory here to store your MP3 files. So to do that, you just type mkdir for make directory, and we're going to call it bgm. And let's, I'll put the full path, even though I'm in the right location anyway, just in case you type this somewhere else. So it's home forward slash pi forward slash bgm. And then if I put uh, ls hyphen lah, it just give me a list of that directory, and you can see we've got that folder there. Now, um, because I've just created it, it's got nothing in. But what I'll do, I'll just move one of my MP3s in. And like I say, you can you can put files in here in exactly the same way you copy other files like ROMs across, whether it's FTP or the USB stick or Samba Share or I guess that works. Um, however you want to do it, you can get your files in there. So I'm just going to move that Ben Sound one. Move Ben Sound into BGM. Does that work? Does that work? Hang on. Uh, Hang on, hang on, I will get it. Um, I'm doing something obviously wrong, that's annoying. Cannot move the MP3 to there, no such for, oh. Hang on, hang on. Move the file from where it is to Home Pi BGM. There. What was I doing wrong? Anyway, that's all good. So, um, if we change directory into BGM, there's my file. So I know now that Emulation Station will play that when you start up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, if you've got any questions, um, please put it on the um, comments below. And do check out the forum post that I'll link to because that's really helpful as well. And if you've got any other questions or um, need to know anything else, check out the forums. Loads of useful info there. Uh, hope that helps. Thanks.